welcome to Masterpiece Theater's presentation of Sherlock Holmes and the Math Murder. You may have heard of the great detective Sherlock Holmes, who solves supposedly unsolvable crimes. But how does he do it? Using math, as we shall soon see. Oh my god, he's dead! Wait, wait, don't push the knife. Oh, we better go talk to Holmes. Hey, some doodles. A dry cleaning receipt. Better take these to home. Would you guys like to buy any candy? This is a crime scene. Get out of here. This looks to be mathematical. And this is definitely math. So we need to take these up to Dr. Gordon at the college. And then we need to go investigate at LaGrange dry cleaners. So, Dr. Gordon, we found this doodle at the crime scene. Do you know anything about it? Yes, well, this is a Taylor series right here. What's a Taylor series? Well, I might inform you that Brooke Taylor was born in Edmonton at that time, Middlesex, to John Taylor of Griffin's house, Kent, and Olivia Tempest, daughter of, daughter of Sir Nicholas Tempest Spark, of Derrick and Brooke, and moved in John's College in Cambridge as a fellow commoner in 1701, and took degrees of LLB and LLD in 1709 and 1714, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Gordon, let me stop you. The history behind Taylor himself is very interesting, but we're specifically interested in the Taylor series relating to this function, sign of X. This paper, in what, in what seems to be written in the victim's blood, was found crumpled in her hand at her death. Well, I'd love to assist you, but unfortunately I have a class right now, so I would have to allow you to refer to my assistants. We found this clutched in the victim's hand. Sign X. That's, um, it's related to a McLaurin series. Now, McLaurin series come from Taylor series. The general formula for Taylor series, which approximates any, which, which is a polynomial that approximates any curve for a certain number of terms. So, for Taylor series, the formula is the sum to infinity of the nth derivative of some number a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. Now, for sine x, there's a Maclaurin series, which is the same as the Taylor series, only a equals zero. So then, we'll have the sum turns to infinity, the nth derivative at zero over n factorial times just x to the n. Now, the Maclaurin series for sine x goes like this. The x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc. Now, when we approximate a curve with our polynomial, we're going to have a certain amount of error, which is, you know, it's pretty obvious because you have certain number of terms, and then, you know, you have terms left. So, to approximate that, we use the Lagrange, the Lagrange remainder theorem, which states that the remainder is equal to the n plus 1 derivative of some number z between x and a over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. Now, in this case, a is 0, so we don't need this term. But we don't even need the Lagrange remainder theorem because the series for sine x is alternating. So that means that the error when we calculate sine x is going to be less than the next, than the next term. So we don't need the Lagrange remainder theorem. Thank clear? you for your help. Glad to help. Hi, can I help you? Have you ever seen this girl? Um, yeah, she comes in here about once a week. Has she ever come in with anyone else? Yeah, lately she's been coming in with some guy, and they were usually pretty lovey dovey when they were here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe him? I've seen him a few times, I think I could. Let's take you to a sketch artist. Mr. Penn, this is Mr. Smith. He'll be describing the victim's significant other for you today. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And uh, could you just go ahead and run through the basics? What kind of hair color, eye color, the size of his head? Um, I'd say a medium-sized head. He has very dark hair, but very short. 
Uh, he has a little bit of facial hair on his chin. Larger nose. You guys want to buy any candy? Any, any candy at all? No, we're good, thanks. Sir, you, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Um, he has pretty straight teeth. And he was wearing, uh, the day I saw him, he was wearing a white hooded jacket with air apostle on it. Okay. How's this? That looks really good. Wait till our photography department gets in. It'll be even better. Have you ever seen this man before? No, I don't know who he is, okay? I'm from China. I speak Chinese. Rock English. Thank Come you. on. Excuse me, have you ever seen him? Nope, never before. Excuse me, sir. Have, have you ever seen this man? Sorry, dude. Okay. Is this man familiar to you? No, that dude looks like an idiot. Have you ever seen this man? Ah. Have you ever seen this man? Nope. Have you ever seen this man, sir? No. Hi, have you ever seen this man? Oh, wait, yeah, I have. That's Big Newton. He lives in, like, 1674 Lyman Street, I think, part of Lyman, maybe? Yeah, Thank definitely you. him, totally. Thank you. Yes? I have terrible news. Jenny, Ed, may we come in and talk to you? <laughs> Tell us anything that would help us catch the killer. Oh. Sorry. Allergies. Uh, Jenny thought she had been stopped lately. And, you know, it went on for a while. And one time she said she got a good look at the guy. She was going to confront him. That's the last I heard from her. For being such a short fellow, I noticed that your pants fit remarkably well. Yes. Jenny had them altered for me. My God, Watson! I know who the killer is! Excuse me, Mr. Smith. I was wondering if you had a tailor here. Yes, his name is Rip. Could we speak with him, please? Rip, get in here. What? I'm busy with... He's getting away! Don't worry, the police are standing outside. First off, I saw Jenny's name high on Dr. Gordon's class list, with high marks. She had great grades all year. Secondly, the sign of X that we found clutched in her hand. She crossed it off, showing off that the killer did not have a sinus condition. And also, by crossing it off, it was a double negative because sign of X, since it's alternating, does not require the Lagrange remainder theorem, telling us that since it's crossed off, the person, the killer, was associated with Lagrange dry cleaners. Finally, in her doodle that we found in her apartment, she was absent-mindedly she absent-mindedly put a Taylor series in the center, showing us that the Taylor at Lagrange Dry Cleaners was the killer, but she didn't know his name. She confronted him, Rip Cord, and that confrontation led to her untimely demise. Amazing, Holmes! Thank you for joining us for this presentation of Sherlock Holmes and the Math Murdered. Please tune in next time for Six Bell's presentation of Climbing the Tree of Calculus. Who's afraid of Macorian? No, no, no.